In this video we're going to be talking about the new drag and drop functionality that's now built into Flutterflow and we're going to tie it in with a super base search. Let's go and take a look. A couple of weeks ago Flutterflow introduced the drag and drop functionality. There's a few videos of it now kicking about. Um, so I thought I'd take a look at it and see if we can get it to work and it gave me an idea for something that I've been wanting to do for a while. Um, so what we'll do first, see what I've done, and show how it works, and then we'll go and take a look at what makes it function and how we can use it in our projects. So what we've got here is a simple page um, on test mode, as you can see, and I've got a database full of nutrition products, um, which we've sort of manually scaled the internet for. There's about 17 products. I'll show you that in a minute, and it's to do with the sort of fuel in your workouts, basically. So what we're doing, we're doing a database search on super, on Superbase. So if we put in gel, so if you're in a business support, you know what a gel is, an energy gel. What I've done is created a row, which is um, scrollable. I've only brought in the first 10 items just to uh, make it easier. And then when you do, you just grab one of those and drop it in there. So science and support is manufacturer. That's the product and that's the amount of calories in it because when you're doing endurance sports, um, calories during your workout is can be a critical element of it so that's what we're doing there so if we put in shake and then you've got another load of products here and you can just scroll across let's go with that one and maybe let's go also go for a bar and then sites in sport tend to be the ones on the top um, no calories on those ones, interesting mate. So obviously a bit of a blank spot in the database, but let's go for that one. Oh, there we go. And what's happening is this is a list view that's expanding as we add items and it's just pushing this down. So I mean, if we add a few more in, you'll see it go, that'll just go down. And then this page is scrollable, so you can just keep adding them in and just scrolling down. And then, um, what you do then is just if you want to remove them just click on them and they'll remove and you get your drop nutrition badge back that's what I've done um, it's a pretty useful tool actually I've been wanting to do something with this for a while I've had this database kicking about and I wanted to do something with it um, and I may just do that so in this work I've got I've thought of all kind of uses for this on some of the things I'm doing so let's go into uh, Flutterflow and Superbase and just see what we've got working Okay, so we are in Flutterflow. This is the page uh, that we've just been playing with. So I'm going to explain the drag and drop functionality and how we got it to work. So the first thing we're doing on the functionality of it, we're performing a search on our database. So um, as you can see, this is the table we are pulling the information from and we've got about 1600 there you go, 1554 records um, but we've gone over the internet and we've manually created them from the manufacturer's website so that's there and that's what we are the information we are searching so it's the same search functionality as I did in the previous video on Superbase search which the link will be somewhere on the screen now but I will go through it again uh, briefly for the benefit of those that haven't seen that video so basically to populate our search terms we're doing the search so what we need to do with that is perform a custom action so we have got the search box and the go button which is our search button and on the go button we are basically performing a custom action and we are passing a value a search term into the custom action which is the um, value that we type into the search box obviously and then our returned variable from this from the custom action is called returned nutrition which is important to our drag and drop obviously so the custom action we are calling is called search nutrition and we should still be on it no nope, let's change password search nutrition right okay 
and what we're doing is a super base RPC call and we have got a search table um, function that we're calling there and we're passing in the search term search which is the string we're passing in here and we're turning a JSON this is exactly the same as the other video and I'll put the link to that down below because you can download this code from the the uh, page of that video so I'll put a link to that so you can go and grab all this stuff and then in Superbase we need the search table um, function there which uh, search function search table there we go oh that's the one I've called him when I was testing it no that's okay search nutrition table so this is again exactly the same we are searching the nutrition table and we are pulling out the brand the product in the amount of calories and we are returning it as a JSON back to our Flutterflow app and we're performing the sort of the I like search so it's looking for the word bar or shake or you know gel within the text it's not an exact match so uh, and it's also not case dependent so it's uh, which is also handy so that's what we're doing there so we're passing in our search term as text and returning the JSON back to our Flutterflow app from the nutrition table so we're pulling out the brand the product and the calories uh, I mean there is all sorts of I mean performance people interested in sort of carbohydrates and stuff as well but for the simplicity of this I decided to go with calories for now uh, and I think there's probably a lot you can do get it in there and calculate it per workout that kind of thing so that's how you do the search and then when you get back your JSON back into Flutterflow and also this is again critical I guess for the um, for the drag and drop we need a data type a custom data type called nutrition so we've got uh, the brand the product and the k count now think about the custom data type it's absolutely free to work otherwise it won't these values the field names have to match exactly values in your super base columns so what if your columns called brand it has to match exactly so for instance if it was k cal underscore calories it'd have to be k cal underscore calories or whatever so they have to be match and then the data type match as well so we've got string string and double and what we're doing then is on our page um this is when we start using that information in the text boxes but I'll come to that in a second because once we perform the search we need to then build up the page to uh, to show it and then be able to drag and drop the information now if you watch the official Flutterflow video for this what they're saying is you don't actually drag widgets you drag data so it looks like you're dragging a widget but you're actually dragging the data from this widget to that widget so uh, and you have to make sure you're dragging the right type of data so we're going to look at that in a second so just a couple of more things on the page here this is a image which is conditional so it's there um, when there's nothing in the drop box and then it will as soon as you drop stuff in it will disappear as you saw in the demonstration there and this is just there for decoration basically so that's that so how do we set up drag and drop basically we need two elements one is called draggable and one is called drag target and basically we drag stuff from the draggable into the drag target now let's set up the draggable first so basically um, I've got mine there inside a container which so I can have the background obviously then we've got the row which is where I've set the list which is where I've got the children so we've got a scrollable row so we can scroll left to right and then the draggable is then is within your um, row so the child element so the draggables will become child elements so as you can see there draggables are child elements of the row so each one of those draggable elements will have those data points assigned to it for when you drag it up here 
basically. Um, now our row list is based on our search nutrition. So our search term that we're returning on the button, if you remember, is called return nutrition. That's our variable that we're turning our JSON, basically, returning the, the variable return nutrition and our list for our row is the variable name search nutrition and basically return nutrition action output is what we're using to create the dynamic children and then once we've done that and we've sort of created the dynamic children we can then assign the values from the JSON to each of these text items so for instance here we've got search nutrition item which is obviously our returned item and then to to a data type and our custom data type is called nutrition and then we're picking one of the structured fields which is the brand and then default variable so if there's nothing in the um, nothing in the in the JSON for that particular record otherwise you'll throw an error if there's if there's a null value so we have a brand in there just brand product kcal and we do the same on this one and this is basically taking the product so again we're taking the variable which is basically our list to the data type and the data type is nutrition and we're using the product and then the bottom one we're assigning the calories and that's how we are setting up our scrollable list and then on the draggable so your draggable has to have a data type assigned to it so on this one we're using data type um, you can drag all of these there's a couple of the videos actually that I've seen kicking about and they've used colors that was the one of the ones Superbase used and I've seen they did document as well um, and I've seen another one with data type so there's a few videos kicking about with a number of these different things so they're worth probably going to check out if if you want something specific uh, so we are using a date, data type so we are dragging our data type from our draggable to our drag target because we are mapping our return JSON to a custom data type as per the search um, response. And then on the drop zone, so we have the drag target as our, I guess, parent element in this section. And in there we've got a container and a list view. Now, the list view obviously needs a value to create the dynamic children and in this instance we are using a page state variable so we've got a page state variable called it selected nutrition and the type is data type and the data type we're using is obviously our nutrition data type and it's a list because of it we're adding to it what we do then our drag target also has to be given its properties of the type of data it's going to accept remember we're not dragging the widgets we're dragging the data and that would have to be data type and again the data type is nutrition so your draggable properties in terms of the type of information you're moving has to match otherwise you get an error uh, so we need to make sure that our draggable properties here match what we're putting in our target basically otherwise it's going to get an error and then we've got the container with the row and the text values which obviously dynam generates dynamic children from in the list view as you'd normally get with Flutterflow and what we've done here these values in these text items are mapped to our, our drop nutrition list um, but the list is generated from the page date variable so to summarize our list and our dynamic children in our scrollable row are, di are generated from our return nutrition search from Superbase, i.e. the JSON that we're mapping the custom data type to. And 
our dynamic children in this in the list view are generated from a page state variable who selected nutrition and then on the drag target we need to gen put some functionality to be able to accept that data because if you think about it we've got a blank page state variable and we've got all these items here which are mapped to the custom data type so on the drag target basically we just need on drag accept we just need an update page state and then we're adding to the list drag data so what that means is the data we're dragging from down here from our scrollable row into our list view gets transferred and added to our, our page date variable and that then updates this information there and then what we've done also on the container again we've got a page date variable the same page date variable sorry and what we're doing we're removing the drop nutrition item from list so the list item within our page date variable which is assigned to this particular container obviously it could be this container or that container or whatever once we click on it we're removing that from the page date variable and therefore it will disappear and if you remove them all you'll get the image back that says drop here or whatever it said so that's um, that's how it works it can be a little bit tricky to set up um, but it's not too bad once you get your head around it and you just need to make sure that you've got your draggable elements down here our uh, basically child of your list that you're creating otherwise it will drag them all in one or it just won't work so your draggables need to be children of your list basically so whatever so you maybe have a data grid or a list view or whatever it may be you know, I thought it would be different just to scroll across and drag up I thought it was just for the demonstration and whether I use that I don't know but I do quite like it um, but your draggables need to be children of children of your sort of listed item I guess to make sure that you're dragging the correct information up and then up here your drag target is your parent widget and then your list is underneath it and then what we're doing we are just sort of adding on receipt of that information we are adding it to the page date variable which in turn updates the list that's it really it's um it's, 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 i'm really glad they've done it so i can think of tons of uses i've thought about i might try and make a battleship clone game i think that'd be quite a fun thing to do uh, and there's a few things in terms of creating custom workouts on my workout app i'm definitely going to use it for that so i'll have a play with it and i'll probably come back with some more when i have done it so if i skipped over the base search bit a little bit quick again go check out that video and but all the code that i use there you can download from the link below so hopefully that's helped hope you can use it in your projects and as always thank you for watching if you did get anything out of this please consider like and subscribe it's a huge help for such a small channel as this so uh, i'll speak to you next time